Well, welcome uh, yet again to another Comics Grinder. This is Henry Chamberlain. I have with me Cynthia Von Bueller, who is a musician, a theater person, an artist, a comic book creator. And I, I've got uh, some of her, her biggest books, uh, The Girl Who Electrified Tesla, The Girl Who Handcuffed Houdini, and I also, I couldn't help but also get the Illuminati Ball. So we can chat about that. I can actually highlight a few pages from, from each of these. I uh, have had time to get really acquainted with them. And so let me just uh, thank you first for, for doing this. Oh, thank you for asking me. I wanted to. There's so many uh, so many points of entry, as I was just telling you earlier. Like the dollhouse behind me, you have quite a, a history with that. What might you want to tell us about the... Uh, your dollhouse making well i when i was my my father made me a dollhouse when i was a little girl and ever since then i've been obsessed with dollhouses <laughs> and i i started using them for my work in children's books and i i wrote and illustrated two children's books with dollhouse uh sets that i made and um and, and one of them had dolls i made and the other one i made little oil paintings cut them out and placed them in the dollhouse sets Oh, wow. Uh, and that's called um, But Who Will Bell the Cats? And uh, the other one was The Cat Who Wouldn't Come Inside. And they were both put out by Houghton Mifflin Harcourt. So, yeah. yeah. And then Speakeasy Dollhouse, of course. We were talking about Speakeasy Dollhouse was, I, I made a whole Speakeasy Dollhouse because my grandfather was murdered by, and in 1935, and I didn't know why. So I made a dollhouse because he, he, he ran Speakeasies and he was a bootlegger. So I recreated his life in, in small form. Like mm -hmm. Francis Fletcher Lee, who used that to fi to figure out forensics, and so I wanted to do the same thing, and then I turned it into a play. <laughs> yeah, I uh, well, I'm just going to uh, admit to everyone that for some reason you you weren't on my radar, but there's there's so many comics, and I pride myself on being on in touch with everything. But I, of course, nobody can be in touch with everything. But the girl uh, who electrified Tesla, that started to to just uh, appear on my Instagram and. So one thing led to another. So this was my uh, my point of entry. Uh, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll reveal to everyone, which might be the case for a lot of folks, that because uh, you've got two in incredible books that already have a history to them, but there's always new readers coming in from you. You don't know where. Yeah, I'm 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 sort of new to 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 the comics, adult comics. You know, I've just this is the first project I I did was the Houdini, the girl who handcuffed Houdini for Hard Case Crime Titan Comics and. I can't remember what year that was, but I'm kind of new to it. Um, but uh, now I've, I'm on my what? My fourth one. Uh, I'm doing a third book in that series, the Girl Who series. So, which is really can, exciting. Can you tell us anything about about the new one coming up? It, it's 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 a little bit weird. Um, it's it's uh, the girl called Cthulhu, and. Wow. And it is actually, it's about how writers during World War II helped end World War II. So it's about Ian Fleming, who wrote all of the James Bond books, but he was also an agent in in, um, in England during that time. And he, he was very involved in helping end the war. It's also about Aleister Crowley, who was sort of a double agent at the time. <laughs> And um and and many other writers. Peter Peter Fleming, that's Ian Fleming's brother. He also was involved, and in, it's really quite interesting. And I don't think anyone's ever written a book about how writers um helped end World War II. My goodness, I'm sure. <laughs> lo love of course, the title of Cthulhu. So it has it does have Lovecraft in it. <laughs> now, Lovecraft did not help end World War II. He was a little <laughs> bit of a Nazi sympathizer. So, but he is involved in this as well. Well, that's one of the things that ties all your books together. There's so much, uh, it's like a, a, a treasure trove for, for a person who loves to read and investigate. And uh, so there's all sorts of, uh, as we, it comes up so often, Easter eggs. There's all sorts of some yeah. factoids and rabbit holes, fun rabbit holes. 
Yeah, I really enjoy like researching um, these people and that had maybe questionable deaths or um, there's some questionable history and finding the bizarre facts that you 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 hear it and you think that can't be true, but but it is true. And then proving that it's true and putting it out there with evidence that these things actually happened. And and um, I I really get into that. <laughs> There's a famous uh, quote, I, I can't think of who said it now, but if you read three books, you become an expert because a, a lot of people sadly aren't readers or, or they read yeah. some, but if, once you reach book three, you're, you, you're kind of like, you've elevated yourself to a point where you're, you're, you're getting to expert status and you learn so many things because once you start reading one book and then another, and you, all these connections start to appear that you wouldn't have thought and it's all, yeah. it's all deep in, in the reading. Yes, yes. I, I disagree with that. I think you need to read more than three to be an expert. Oh, but, of course. It's a cynical, it, very yeah, cynical but it's, it, Yeah, but it's true. I mean, people. some people will read one book and think they're an expert, <laughs> right? Yeah. But um, I don't think I'll ever be an expert. In, you know, there's always more you can learn. And there's things you can't even know. Like, you know, you, you just have to extrapolate and figure it out. But, um, but. But yeah, I am a big reader. I love reading history. I love reading British novels and uh, everything. I'll read my, I'll get whatever I get my hands on. I love to read. Well, uh, I want to show uh, some pages from the book or the books. Um, let me. And speaking of uh, interesting facts, I'll, I'll go right over to one thing that I was quite intrigued by. It looks a little blurry, maybe. Yeah, oh. it's it, it it it'll require a little adjustment for me. Yeah. But I'm really intrigued by this uh, this whole Georgia guide. Oh. Yeah. Guide stones, which now uh, I've, I've discovered, no longer exist. Did they they were blown up by somebody not too long no. ago? It it was blown up like shortly after the book came out. Oh um, wow! Yeah, I I like finding all of these things and kind of putting them together. But the Georgia Guidestones are really interesting, and I knew I wanted to put them into this story. Um, I think that they're very very cool. I it's sad that it's gone. Somebody somebody built this amazing structure. It's gigantic in Georgia, and it has it like a, sort of a manifesto written on it in many different languages and and i found them i found it fascinating and i tied that into my story but some people think some people said it was the illuminati whatever and i disagree i you know i wrote this book the illuminati ball it's not necessarily even about the illuminati it's about these animals uh high, human hybrids and science and and all kinds of things but um but but i don't necessarily believe in the illuminati <laughs> yeah and then some people think that I do because I write books about it and I, you know, I, and I, um, I know a lot about it, of course. Well, uh, I, oh, I have a friend who really does believe all the urban myths, but uh, yeah, that's quite a rabbit hole there. But you uh, explain to folks that uh, indeed there, there was an Illuminati, which uh, yes. back to 1776, which was a, uh, a, a way to, to try to, to, reveal the truth or, or to yeah it was more of you know to try to make society better and it was a positive thing and um it, you know the same thing with religion like things always kind of get bastardized as they go on it's sort of yeah. like a game of telephone and they become something else and 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 that's a little problematic but i think if you research it you find out yes of course there was an illuminati back then um, it's not what how they they like to you know describe it now. I don't think that there's a big group of of rich wealthy people who are controlling the world. Um, I think sh sure in business they are, but I don't think it's sort of a secret society. No, it's not a a vast uh, conspiracy. Mm -hmm. I like I like like I like investigating conspiracies. Oh yeah, I don't necessarily believe in them, but I will find some truths in them. Well, just to, to show the cover, the, the Illuminati ball, and this has like a, a built-in uh, 
extra thing going on. It, there actually is an Illuminati ball, and, and it's still going on. I, I just looked it up. You've got one coming up, or, or did, it just closed. The application's just closed for it, I think. Yes, I, we were going to do one on a secret island. Um, and yes, it, it, applications are closed. Uh, I've been doing it, I don't know, for the last six years. I've been holding Illuminati balls in New York and at secret locations. And um, okay. it basically tells this story that's in my graphic novel. Um, it's it's about these. Should I explain what it's about or does that sort of. Sure, sure. Will that be. Uh, well, I think I it's mean, perfectly <laughs> fine. Yeah. So it's it's there are these uh, animal human hybrids that that have been been bred to in Georgia to uh, harvest their organs. And, uh, and so, and it's being done illegally and they break out, they meet me at the Georgia Guidestones. I say, I'm going to help them. And then they pig King, the leader of, of their group, um, starts reading some books in my library and reads about the Illuminati and the Rothschilds and all of that. And, has this idea that that he will start an Illuminati in order to get power, to bring power, um, to have these events in order to bring powerful people who can maybe help them. Um, and that's when, you know, that's what basically my event is the same thing. I We, we put this event out. We, we, we have um, an application people have to fill out. They have to be accepted. The entry fee to come to the, the ball is very expensive. And then we blindfold people and put them and transport them to a location and they experience the Illuminati ball, which is, which is amazing. Like, some people have described it as like the best experience of their life. Oh, I and, it, yeah. yeah, it's really amazing. I actually have a great time at it and we all get to know each other and the story unfolds, but it's also about relating to people and morality tests. Like we give people morality tests and it's really interesting. Well, maybe I'll I will do it someday, or, or I'll, I'll apply <laughs> first to see if I'm accepted. But I, yeah. let me move on. Uh, the girl. I should say that right now we're not accepting applications because we have we have a lot that I still have to go through, and I'm taking a little break because I'm working on a, a pretty big project right now. So I I need to take a little bit of a break from it. Oh sure. Now the girl who handcuffed Houdini. This is. Uh, I, my mind is still going back to Tesla, so I, I might be conflating or, or rethinking, not thinking clearly. But oh, here, well, that's why I have these posters to help me along. I really love the uh, the wife of Houdini and and the parrot, and yeah, uh, the way you you uh, compose is just is just delightful. You manage to to keep everything moving. Um, she so so that all of that information is is true. So so yes, um, Bess Houdini, you know, is it is, is involved in my story. They did have you know a lot of animals, and they always named their animals people's names. Um, and in this book, Mickey's has a rabbit named Agatha, which is also named after which is named after Agatha Christie. And they kind of bond over that Houdini and um, Minky bond over that. But um, in my story, uh, Beth Houdini has hired Minky to find out if her husband is cheating on her. Right. I, but it turns into a much bigger plot. Which yeah, is each of, each of these books is a world to itself. So it's, it's hard for me to, to juggle back and forth. I'm surprised or impressed that you were able to do that wonderful recap of the Illuminati ball. Because it's been a while since that, that book came out. Yeah. But uh, let me move over to the Tesla book. Cause I sure. want to keep things. Yeah, the cover, if you look at the cover, I do all the illustrations on the inside end, and I also do covers. But that one is done by the amazing Robert McGinnis. Oh, that's right. That's right. And Robert McGinnis did, um, did, he did Breakfast at Tiffany's poster and all the James Bond books and posters. And he was like this amazing, well, he's still alive. He's, I think he's almost a hundred now, still painting, but he did all these pulp book covers, really beautiful women, kind of erotic, but powerful. Oh yeah, absolutely. Very iconic work. This uh, just grabbed me right away. It's so I iconic and it's the way the poses, the whole thing is just, it's just beautiful. 
I did want to um, say a few things about the uh, the New Yorker hotel room that you stayed in the actual mm -hmm. room that, that Tesla uh, lived in. Yeah, and actually, it's right. I live in, in that neighborhood. It's right around the corner here. Oh, my goodness. What a treat. Yeah, but we did stay there. Actually, I stayed there with Pearls Daly, and she's my model uh, for Minky Woodcock. I stayed there and, and with some of the other models for the book. And, um, you know, I posed them, drew them in, in the actual environment. And, the you know, I could that, that's the view. That's the actual. I get really into those kind of details. Like, what is the view from the window? And and that kind of thing. Oh yeah, um, yeah. I can. It has a lived-in feeling to it, uh, and you can't get those details any other way, really, unless you have the the proper reference material, or you're actually there. My goodness. Yeah. And uh, you can use uh, dollhouses. I've used actual people. Whatever it takes. Yeah. But you, yeah, you get that extra authenticity from from going through that. And yeah, I mean, there was I a after, there was an ice skating rink in that hotel. After living in that room, uh, it, this feels just so like like I'm right there with with Nic Nicola and and uh, and the beloved pigeon. Yeah, I well, so the pigeon, I so I don't know if everyone your list your uh, the people who watch your show know this, but he Tesla was in love with the pigeon. He really, really loved feeding pigeons, but he had one pigeon that he really loved and he considered her like his wife. And many people like to make fun of that, but I thought it was really, it really struck me. And I I, 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 I save pigeons in New York. I, res I help rescue pigeons. And I have about a hundred pigeons at my place in the country that I've rescued and they fly free and I feed them and take care of them. So I also really love pigeons. They're really smart. They're really interesting. Um, so I can I can understand um, his love of his pigeon. <laughs> yeah, I, when I read it, I I uh, I just took it in and say, oh, okay, that's 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 interesting. And uh, we were at dinner, and my son-in-law mentioned that just out of the blue. We, oh. we, I mentioned Tesla, and he said, well, you know, there's there there was that thing about him and and a pigeon. That, that yeah. That relationship with a pigeon and and he didn't say it in a mocking way he, he, he thought that was you know it is what it is it's pretty cool yeah, yeah. he was an he was an unusual man he really suffered from ocd pretty heavily yeah. um you know he was a creative genius and um yeah he loved his pigeon and the pigeon takes plays a big part in my story actually now the other thing that i i did before this interview is i i watched this delightful uh WonderCon panel that uh andrew sumner led oh that was great right yeah yes uh i couldn't stop watching it. i watched it all the way to the end and uh it, it is a wonderful back and forth uh, discussion about uh, the working with you and, and charles uh our day am i pronouncing his last name correctly our day i think so yeah charles yep yeah charles. and I, I was just thinking man what it might I, be our I, die charles our die charles our die our die yeah i had to uh, look in the book to get the correct spelling because like <laughs> Couldn't, couldn't quite figure. Sorry, Charles, uh, if I got it wrong, but I think it's Charles will die. <laughs> but uh, well, when I'm doing work, I can't help. I feel like uh, I'm a like in a, a prisoner. I, I I grab my plate and I, I'm I'm hovering over it. I, I don't want anyone else to mess with it. But I guess if you have that the the, the right chemistry, then it, it works beautifully to have just the right editor. Oh, he's he's a genius. He's wonderful. He's an amazing writer himself. He also does. He's actually been working on another series um, for Hard Case Crime and Titan, which is called Gun Honey. And um, although this came out first, now he's been working on Gun Honey. But he writes, you know, novels and crime crime novels, and he's he's amazing. He's a great writer. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm, just, I'm so. I've learned a lot from him actually, as my oh, editor. Sure. Well, I'm so grateful that I stumbled upon. This gem, and it's led me to to so many other uh, treasures to to enjoy. I mean, I'm really impressed with everything I've seen so far of a hard case crime. Yeah, they're beautiful. I I'm actually I'm really excited about the one I'm working on now. It's the first the first issue will be coming out in October, and uh and it's it's actually currently my favorite one. It it's really it's I'm really enjoying it. I really like it. I think people will like it. Can you uh, tell us anything about uh, 
when the next book will, uh, is scheduled to maybe come out, your, your next one? Yeah, so that one, so what we do is when uh, when we do a graphic novel with, with Titan Comics, uh, we do four, four comics, and then they come out once a month. The first one's going to come out in October, then the next one will be out, you know, the following month. And then around Christmas time, we're going to be releasing the graphic novel. Um, oh, good. A compilation of all four comics. So it's, but the first one is, I already finished it. I finished drawing it, writing, I've already written the whole book. Now I'm drawing it. And on that takes quite some time. And um, yeah, so I have to, I do three more. Three well, more I wanted comics. to ask you a little bit about your, your process. Mm -hmm. it, it seems to me that it's all uh, pen and ink and then you do the digital coloring or am I mistaken? Um, it's a combination. I do some hand drawings sometimes, but I've been really like liking using the iPad for drawing. I find I, it's it's the first time I've found something that the pen feels like a pencil. Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, it it really is great, and I can do it from anywhere. So I I really have um, been loving using that. It really is very traditional. You're just using a pen, this pen, and it goes in there. So. So, but I also did some of uh, some hand drawing, um, you know, where I can scan it in and and you know um, color it. But I'm right now. I've been doing these books um, in the iPad, drawing like a regular drawing, a pen and ink. I use the pen and ink. I use a brush called Badass Inker Number Three. That's my favorite brush, like brush to use. It looks like an ink brush. It's a little rough. Um, okay. I think there's this guy named named Kyle. And he makes these brushes. And so I love his brushes. They're fantastic. And uh, and so anyway, you know, that I've been I draw them and then I color them too. In you know, I, and I also use a little Photoshop in the end, you know, like you know, yeah. sizing and all of that. Well, it's remarkable. Uh it looks all uh done by hand. And now you can it do is. That. I mean, it kind of is done by hand, you know what I mean? Well, it like is. It is. isn't it? Yeah. It is like I'm I am such a traditionalist because my paintings like I did. I'm, I'm, I've been an illustrator for many years and, um, you know, I've illustrated for, a, you know, Rolling Stone and New Yorker. I've illustrated for a lot and I won a lot of awards for it. Oh, my, yeah, of course. I did paintings like these gouache paintings with three dimensional objects in them. So I would actually paint it and then construct it and then put the object or a live bird in it and then photograph it. So I'm a real traditionalist when it comes to creating and working with my hands and um, really drawing, you know, I don't use computer. I don't use, I don't even know how to use Illustrator. Illustrator is a computer program. You to do kind of lines. Yeah. A dots. I can't do that. It's not drawing. I just want to draw with a pencil. So I am a traditionalist. So I think still consider this drawing. It's just the only problem with using the computer is you don't you don't have a end project. You don't have an end piece. Right. It's digital, so you don't have something you could sell or whatever. Well, I uh, I love. Uh, I, I don't, I'm assuming you use Procreate, but maybe you don't, or do you? I I, um, I use Fresco. Fresco, okay. I, I you know I was oh, I started by using something called Sketch, Adobe Sketch. And um, a lot of the, mink, the the first book, the Houdini book, was done with Sketch. And then in the middle of like Tesla, they they got rid of it. They just threw away Adobe Sketch. And then I had to learn. Um, I learned Procreate, but then I found Fresco to be more to my to my liking. Oh, interesting. Um, but I was really I really liked Sketch, and I knew it. And then they got rid of it. Actually, they got rid of it right on deadline when I was working on a really important project. Um, another project and and that that wasn't fun because you have to learn overnight another program I can do it but it wasn't fun yeah yeah, yeah it, it's sad that there have to be so many programs to learn or, or get used to but once yeah. you get used to it it is you are drawing by hand it just happens yeah. to be digital you know yeah. what I love about it I love that you um you when you're doing it, it, mem it memorizes every drawing, every hand movement. Oh yeah. So I have, I, what I'm doing on the current one is I'm record, like you can re it automatically records it. And then I save the video and then I'm going to make a whole, like a movie of me drawing it, you yeah. know, because it's like the, the drawing of the whole book. I mean, I'll cut it cause it'll be really long, but 
I just love that you can speed it up and you can see your hand on the actual, you know, thinking you're showing your idea process. So like you erase something, you add something else in. Yeah. I love it's, that part. It's, of it. I'm just, it's fascinating. And I, I don't know if I should turn that feature off sometimes. I'm wondering how much of this is going to gunk up my, my iPad. It's so much data. But, uh, yeah. That's I why you need to use on. the cloud. Do you also use it? Are you an artist too? Yes. I, I have a, this book here, George's Run, that's oh. me. That was uh, published by Rutgers. Uh, cool. It's still still going through its promotion cycle. So I need oh, I need to check that out. Wow. Well, you I think you, it? I think you would it? love it because it, it it delves into history. It delves into the nitty gritty of the Twilight Zone, which I I think you probably dig too. And yeah, well, I remember Logan's Run. Yeah. That, that, well, <laughs> That was yeah, cool. It's called George's Run. It's a play off of Logan's Run. Really? Because George was one of the co-creators of Logan's Run. And it follows this guy who uh, came from poverty and no connections and became a, a pretty big guy. It wrote some of the most famous Twilight Zones and capped off his career by uh, co-writing Logan's Run. Oh, wow. I definitely have to check that out. Wow. Because I, I really liked Logan's Run when I was little. <laughs> well, that's an example of, of reading and reading. I, I I read a ton of books for this book, for this project. Yeah. So oh, I, I can't, uh, I was at Comic-Con last year and I was trying to pitch my book to this young guy and he said, well, I, I don't read. And well, you hear, I'm sure you hear that a lot, but it, it always hits me hard. Are you sure you don't read? Yeah. Because I don't, I don't think you really mean that. I, I hope not. Yeah. That's it's true. A lot of people don't read anymore. And although that's one thing that they say that's good. I mean, I've just started doing graphic novels for children or, like you know, middle grade. And um, it helps some people who don't read get into reading because it's more visual. Yeah. Um, I personally prefer to read a book um, because I like coming up with the images in my head. But if it can help children start to read, uh, that would be great. Yeah. You know, that's good. So. Well, I, uh, I I wanted to just ask you, can you remember what the spark was that, that got you into the creative life? That, that's such a broad question, but was there, or was there some moment when you were drawing as a kid that it, it, it spoke to you and said, I'm going to keep doing this? Or? Uh, well, I don't remember because it was so early. Um, my whole family is, I, I come from a family of six kids. Both my parents and every single child in the family is super creative and I'm in the middle. And we were just always, the minute I was born, we were drawing, we were making things, we were working on projects together. And some of the best times in my family were working on projects and we worked in all different mediums. Um, we made, um, we were, if just my, the kids in my family were asked to make a gigantic float for the Halloween parade, like out of paper mache, like made this gigantic witch head. And like, we were just very creative family. And um, so I just learned from my siblings, my older sibling, my sister Veronica, older than me, amazing. She had amazing drawing skills. And I always wanted like to be as good as her. And, you know, like we once, I won this an award. She won this award called the Create an Ad Contest when we were little. And I, I have to win that because she won it, you know, <laughs> and, um, you know, and I was always in her shadow because the, my teachers would say, oh, you're Veronica's sister. Can you draw? So, um, yeah. So but everyone in my family, they're all really, really creative. So well, I don't know. I can't answer that question. It was too. I was. No, that's great. It, in the it, womb. I don't know. <laughs> being creative was was the norm. So because a lot of a lot of people are like, I can't even begin to understand how, how you draw but. Yeah, that's great when it's the norm. Yeah, I mean, drawing is um, just one thing I love to draw. I love to just draw with a pencil, but I love to paint. I love to sculpt. I love to use robotic, um, make robotics. And I love to put plays on and make songs. And it's all art. It's all just different ways to express yourself. Well, um, me too. I guess the trick is to organize your plan of attacks. How do you make yeah. this happen and that happen? Yeah. I yeah. mean, sometimes it can get to be like, you know, sometimes I feel like, oh, I just need to focus. Lately, that's what I've been kind of trying to do. 
just, I have a really big project I'm working on now that I can't really talk about and I'm really excited about it. And I'm really trying to focus on it um, and not go off on these tangents. <laughs> But is, it's hard. is that the uh, the film project? Yeah. Okay. So I, I guess maybe uh, if we if we ever get a chance to do another interview, maybe you can talk about that. That. Yeah. A year from now, I, yeah. whenever. <laughs> yeah, I can't really talk about it. But it's very exciting. It's sort of a dream. Well, that sounds great. Yeah. Well, unless there's anything else you wanted to add, I just just want to thank you for this delightful chat. Yeah, thank you for contacting me, you know, and we'll do it once the other book, we'll make sure that Titan sends you a copy of the next book. And we'll we can talk about that one. I think you'll really like it. The yeah. art is so cool. Like, yeah, Titan's yeah. wonderful. Yeah. Thank well, you. Thank you.